All right, guys, so when there's snow on the ground like this, we know it's time. It is time for the rock unit. So let's start looking at the rock cycle. And we're gonna start off with sediment. You have little pieces of sand and dirt and mud and pebbles that get squished and cemented together into our first type of rock, sedimentary rock. All right, it's possible that that sedimentary rock could erode away from wind and rain and become sediment again, or it could be heated up and pressurized by the earth and make it metamorphosize. It'll change physically, change chemically into a different type of rock. Now that metamorphic rock, just like the before, could erode away into little sediments and become sedimentary rock again. Or it could be heated to the extreme and melted into magma. And that magma, as it cools, will become our third type of rock. And that is igneous, which literally means born of fire. All right, now igneous rock could erode away into sediments, going through this whole cycle again, or it could be heated and pressurized to the extreme and become metamorphic, right? So that has two ways. It can go sedimentary, it can go metamorphic. Or, you know, there's other things here too. We can look at, let's look back at that uh, sedimentary rock. Now that could melt and become igneous rock, becomes magma and cools into igneous rock. Metamorphic could do that. This is getting, it seems like it's getting a little confusing, but what I'm showing you here is that each one can become any other type, even itself. You can take one type of metamorphic, heat it and pressurize it, and it can metamorphosize into a different type of metamorphic. All right? Or you can take one type of igneous, melt it into another type of magma, with, and you have more magma. And that is the rock cycle. Now I want to look at uh, those three types, the sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rocks with a little bit more detail and tell you the different categories of each one. And we're going to start off with sedimentary. And here are the three groups. There are clastic sedimentary, organic sedimentary, and chemical sedimentary. So let's look at an example of clastic sedimentary. Okay, hold on guys. All right, so take you wow. down here. We have some really cool sediment all through this river, as you see in all rivers, right? So um, all kinds of stuff. It could be like sediments from a sedimentary rock. It could be sediments from a metamorphic or an igneous rock. But as they break off in weather, uh, these may at some point get so small, it's just little speckles. And those speckles can kind of form together and you might get a classic uh, sedimentary rock, like conglomerate or something like that. This is called conglomerate. It is a clastic sedimentary rock. If I bring it close, you can see uh, the sediments that have been cemented together. Uh, there's a big one here, and there's a lot of smaller um, pebbles and sediments in it. That is conglomerate. Here's another uh, clastic sedimentary rock I want to show you because it's important to us. If you look at it, you might almost think it looks like slate, only it's sort of uh, grayer looking. It's shale. Shale is also known as mudstone. This is compacted mud that has formed into a sedimentary rock. And when it metamorphosizes, then we get slate. All right, so organic is the next one. And organic sedimentary rock is any sedimentary rock that came from something that was once alive, organic, right? A perfect example of this would be uh, organic sedimentary rock that formed about 300 million years ago when the earth looked a lot like this. It was kind of swampy, filled with plant life. It was during, it was about 300 to 350 million years ago during a period of time called the Carboniferous. And uh, when all this plant matter died and was covered up, a lot of it uh, stayed covered. And what it did is it, it basically uh, turned into all, right, all this peat and all this swampy stuff covered, heated, and it turned into coal, right? So coal is an example of an organic sedimentary rock. I'll show you a picture of that. This one is coal, right? It is an organic sedimentary rock formed from uh, dead and decayed plant matter from about 300 to 350 million years ago during the Carboniferous period. 
And if you get some of this, you may have been bad. And the third type of sedimentary rock is chemical sedimentary rock. And this forms as a precipitate. Precipitate means when you mix, um, when you mix liquids together, you can actually have a solid form. And a solid will sink to the bottom of a body of water, an ocean, and all that uh, solid sediment can build up into a chemical sedimentary rock. So I want to show you a, a video clip that's very cool. It's, this is done in the lab, not in nature, of sodium acetate. But I want to show it for the, the main purpose of showing you what a precipitate is. And this here is limestone, right, it's a, a chemical sedimentary rock. And I have another sample here, it's kind of hard to see, but there's little bits and pieces of, of shell in there, a lot of calcium buildup, uh, and it occurs in the ocean. So at one point in time, this was at the bottom of an ocean. I saw I relate to you um how abundant sedimentary rock is. Now sediment is usually carried by rivers, uh, waterways. It was carried by glaciers uh, years and years ago, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, and deposited all the little sediment, and so it formed into sedimentary rock. So most of the surface of the United States is sedimentary rock, uh, but if you dig below that, you're going to find the other types of rock, metamorphic and igneous. But here it just gives you a good idea of, of how abundant sedimentary rock is. All right, the next piece I want to talk about is metamorphic rock. And I want you to think of metamorphosis in the same way that a butterfly metamorphosizes, if I said that right, from a, a caterpillar, right? What we're talking about with metamorphic rock, though, is one rock being squeezed, being pressurized, and heated enough where it can chemically and physically change from what it once was. It has metamorphosized. And there's two types, regional metamorphism and contact. Now with regional, what's happening is two plates, think of your convergent plate boundaries, are running into each other. That produces an enormous amount of pressure. And that pressure will create this metamorphosism right here on the fault, on the break between the two plates. And will will change, will add pressure and change those rocks. So you can guess that if you looked at all the convergent plates around the world, you would find a lot of metamorphic rock. Right? That's regional, it's happening in a region. Contact is you know, down in this area. You, you have magma underground, let's say, and it melts up to a certain point, and any of the solid rock that touches that but doesn't quite melt will metamorphosize into contact metamorphic rock because it's in contact with that, that extreme heat. I wanna show you a couple examples of metamorphic rock, so here we go. All right, here's a metamorphic rock near and dear to our heart in Vermont. This is slate, all right, a piece of red slate here. Of course, our area, Poultney, Fairhaven, Granville, Castleton, is world-renowned because we have every single known color of slate in this area. And this is a metamorphic rock. A lot of pressure and heat basically took shale, a sedimentary rock, and metamorphosized it into this. Another common metamorphic rock in this area, this is marble. Find this over in West Rutland. It's, uh, its parent rock, the rock that it metamorphosizes from, is, is lime. Oh, I'm sorry, is limestone. There we go. And uh, I showed you that earlier as a sedimentary rock. It forms in the ocean. So that tells us that West Rutland was once under the ocean. And uh, so we got layers and layers of sedimentary rock. And when it was pressurized and heated, it metamorphosized into marble. Now here's another metamorphic rock, and if I hold it just right, you might see the sparkles in it. That's a, um, some crystal formation. Uh, this, is, this is mica. That gives it that kind of sparkly crystalness to it, and it's a mica schist. Um, when, you, when you go to, like if we were to break this into sediments, 
into small sediments, you get nice sparkly sediments. And that's the sparkles often that you see in the beach sand. It's that, that mica pieces. But this itself, before it becomes turns into sediments, is a pressurized, heated, uh, metamorphic rock. All right, last but not least is igneous rock. So this is formed from magma. As the magma uh, cools off into a hard rock, you have igneous. And there's two types. There is intrusive and extrusive. Intrusive means that the magma cools inside the earth, so it cools very slowly, giving plenty of time for crystals to grow large in the rock. Extrusive is magma that cools outside of the earth. Right, so it might flow out of a volcano, into the ocean, wherever. That causes it to cool much quicker. And those rocks tend not to have much for crystal formation, uh, if any at all, really. So I'm going to show you an example of, of an intrusive and an extrusive. Let's start with the extru extrusive example. All right, here's an igneous rock. This is pumice, very lightweight. Uh, it is an extrusive igneous rock, meaning that the magma came to the surface of the earth and cooled very quickly. And in this case, when it cools quickly as an igneous rock, it does not get any crystal formation or very small crystal formation because it cooled too quick for the crystals to really form. And in this case, also, if I bring it close, you have a lot of little air bubbles in it, which is why this one is so light. And you put it into water and it'll actually float for a while. Uh, it's such a, a lightweight rock. And here is another igneous rock, granite, probably the most abundant rock found inside the uh, crust of the earth. Um, we think Mount Rushmore, all right, this is a Mount Rushmore kind of rock. Granite is an intrusive igneous rock. It cools inside the earth, so you get bigger crystal formations in it. There it is. All right, guys, that is the end of this one. I'll just leave you with this. It's cold and wet.